Well, Pete, it's homecoming. The weather's going to be great. Your team is hot, coming off one of the biggest wins they've had against a big-time opponent with another big-time opponent. It's all falling in place here for a real fun Saturday, isn't it? Well, we're excited about the opportunity, but the last part of what you said is probably the most important, and that is another really, really good team coming in here. Um, we, we certainly have to be at our best again, and, uh, and that's really what we've been challenging this team to do is just get a little bit better every day, try to be a little bit more consistent, try to embrace who we are. We're not perfect, but we do have good people. We do work hard. We are passionate about what we're doing. And uh, we're excited about this opportunity. And for me, first homecoming here at UB. Yeah, and, and there's a, a lot of reasons why it's going to be a really fun afternoon. You know that Toledo is the team that has been the most successful MAC team over whatever barometer or time period you want to name. Um, when you do what you did to them, does it mean any more than any other win over any other MAC opponents? Yes and no would be my answer. Uh, playing well is playing well, and you, you, of course, need to play well against the team with the firepower that Toledo has. We knew we needed to start off fast. They have come out of the gate so well uh, and outscored opponents, and, and just people had to play catch up against them all season. So the fact that we started off strong, built an early lead, played good defense, played the field position game throughout the first half. That was critical, and, and that's a little bit of a sign of who we are. Uh, and it, we need to continue to do that starting today because we're playing against another very explosive offense. There were a lot of unfamiliar names, maybe unfamiliar to some of the Bulls fans, that, that played very big roles in the win over Toledo. You know, I could rattle a few of them off. Uh, Birch, uh, Barr, Tad Barr, Oliver Bridges, Savion Brown. How, the point I want to get to is you had a lot of guys that had to step up into maybe different roles or roles they hadn't had before. How do you as a coaching staff make sure you've got all those guys ready for whatever it is that you want to throw at them on a week-to-week -week basis. Yeah, one of our mantras around here is that everything matters and everyone matters. And we're always looking at our entire roster, trying to develop our guys, trying to look for places for guys to help the team win. And sometimes your role might be being a great scout team player that week. And sometimes your role grows and evolves if you take advantage of reps in practice. Uh, Messiah Birch is a guy that flashed in the spring, flashed during preseason. He's a younger player. He's still growing, developing, maturing. But little by little, he's, he's making progress. And we were able to put him in into the game, uh, play some meaningful snaps. He took advantage of those. And that's how life works. You take advantage of opportunities, and you're probably going to get some more. How big are you and Messiah right now, fellow Staten Island natives with the Monsignor Farrell High School Alumni Association? Yeah, I give him a hard time about that. When he, when he does something well, I let him know he's a Farrell guy. And when he does something not so well, I say, you know, I, you're not really representing Farrell the way we need you to right now. But, but uh, And then, of course, Henry Tabazny's from Staten Island as well. So we have some good conversations about pizza and bagels and Staten Island landmarks and all that kind of stuff. That is, it is really pretty cool. Let's talk with Pete Lembo as we get you ready for the Bulls and the Western Michigan Broncos. What causes you the most consternation as you get ready for this Western Michigan Broncos team? I think they're a really talented team and they've played well in all three phases, but the thing that jumps out the most is how explosive their offense is. Uh, they've got a terrific running game. The last three games they've rushed for almost 200 yards in each of those games, right up close to 200. Uh, very, very uh, cohesive offensive line, a veteran offensive line, very deep at running back, uh, a, a quarterback who is very efficient, completing 70% of his passes, some receivers on the outside that can really hurt you. So this is a team that is not afraid to get in a track meet with people. All right, let's, we wrap it up with learning with Lembo as we do every week here. And you've got a lot of experience of playing Western Michigan from your years in the MAC. But for those people that don't know, Kalamazoo, Michigan is where they're located. The next town over is Battle Creek, Michigan, which you're, if you're a breakfast eater, you would know that's the home of Kellogg. So that leads me to, we want to know what Pete Lembo's favorite cereals have been through your lifetime. Well, frosted mini wheats would would be right up there at the it's top. It's a very of the adult list. choice, by okay. the way. Okay, all right, good. So let let's scale it back. Honey bunches of oats, and and that's something we have in our nutrition hub that I occasionally partake in, <laughs> even today. Uh, I was definitely a Captain Crunch guy 
growing Can't go up. wrong with that. No, no. You had to, you had to love Captain Crunch. But uh, corn flakes, frosted flakes, it's all good. All right. It is all good. It has been all good for Pete and the Bulls, and they're going to look to keep it all good when they host the Western Michigan Broncos. Pete, good luck this week for homecoming 2024. Thank you. Good to be here.